That'll be the top eight. Yeah. Right now we need to determine who's going to be in that top eight. Will it be James Wynn? Or, then you're going to look at James oh, Wynn. James Wynn. You know James Wynn. Yeah. He, local he, ringer? He's a local ringer. Local ringer, he okay. He every PTQ. He's a very, very Versus international ringer, Ben <laughs> Stark. <laughs> Just one of the best players in the world. You can see Ben has his game face on. Yeah. Like you mentioned before, he's got a he won Pro Tour Pro Tour Paris. Right. Five Grand Prix top eights to his career. Yeah. You know, looking for six does not have his win yet. There's he's a not even a full time Magic player. I mean, this guy is a very talented guy. He yeah. can just drop in and win tournaments. He's one of those guys. Yeah. There's a Nibbles of the Urn. Nibbles of the Urn. So we're looking very aggressive to start here. Oh, that that Nibbles is actually going to do some damage with once it picks up a dagger. Yeah. It's going to be tapping guys down and hitting for three once it gets the dagger. I've never actually spoken to James personally, but I see him at every tournament and I've seen him make runs in, in many of them. All right, we're going to Whip attack for three. We're going to hit a land drop. We are. Uh, I have gotten a chance to get a peek of Ben's deck. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, what is it? That's I want to uh... give everything away here, but... And he's red black. We know that. He's red black. He's got three of a card that is better in multiples. What? What, what is it? You can say it now. Bump in the night. Oh man. Three of them. So, you know, if the game is at all close, then he can just out of nowhere. He can just like smack it out of your just hand. Six you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's a Heckling Fiends. It's not a card we've seen a lot of today. I like that card. I think I probably like it a little bit better for seals. Sure. Two and a red to activate. You can force a target creature to attack. Now, it's not doing a whole lot here because it looks like James is going to want to be attacking anyway. And yeah. if Ben wants, he has the option to trade for the Mausoleum Guard that's on the table. But, of course, we know that James is just going to get two tokens out of the deal anyway. And uh, given what we know about Ben's deck... It's more likely that he just wants to race. Looks like he needs a swamp. Looks like he has one. Is that a strong Kirk patrol? Yeah. So it's a 4-3, and it has the uh, ability that Mark Rosauder was just talking about, the Slith ability that whenever it hits an opponent, it's plus one, plus one counter. He called it Slith? He did. That's what I call it, but... Uh... I'm assuming there's a card called Slith. Slith Firewalker. Oh, well, that actually does ring a bell. I might know what that one is. Apparently in such RD, a, that is Such a Slith. babe in the woods. I haven't been playing that long. Yeah, even like... Rusty knows. Rusty, you have to know. You, you're half of the greatest mystery-solving duos. You, <laughs> you have to solve that. All right, we're going to Victim of Night, the Niblis of the Urn. There should be a counter on the unruly mob, shouldn't there? He, ben played Victim of Night on the uh, Niblis of the Urn. Was it in response to the unruly mob being played? Oh, was it on the stack? Okay, that, that might have been, been the, the case. I'm not sure. And we'll have to we'll have to just trust the board state currently. Uh, there's a Russet Wolves. James has added a rotting fence snake to his board. Um, Rotting Fen Snake's like the Denny's of four drops. The Denny's of four drops. Yeah, it's like you never really want to go to Denny's, but sometimes they're open. Oh, you know God. what I mean? And you find yourself there and yeah, you're like, Yeah, it's like Denny's slogan. Right. Denny's slogan is like, We're open. We're open. <laughs> right? I... All right, and James is just going to, James is just going to ship in his whole team here. You've got Ben on, on the ropes here at seven. Ben just wants to take down the two biggest creatures here, right? But then he makes that I mean, unruly he's, mob very unruly. And the unruly mob's already a 4-1 right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's tanking it out here, trying to see if there's a way out. He's under a ton of pressure right now. He's already committed to trading. 
the snake for the heck of yeah, the seems... And it looks like he's just forced to yeah. trade here and here. He's going to take six damage. And James is going to pick up two counters on his unruly mob. So does this mean we can't get Denny's as a sponsor for the run that, That's exactly what it means. I think I just quit. <laughs> I like Denny's. <laughs> My friends always want to go there and play Magic. And it's nuts. They're open. Don't, don't you understand that? Yeah. They picked the right slogan. Well, James made uh, very short work of that one. I mean, um, uh, James, James gets into this top eight. He, he is going to get there with some mighty impressive skulls on his belt. Yeah, oh, James, like I said, I've seen him uh, go deep in PTQs time and time again. I remember when I first started playing again, I was at a, a local, like a charity or a memorial type tournament. Uh, but there was a lot of the local ringers were out. There were some, some nice prizes and stuff. And I was still learning the game, you know. I was yeah. uh, in my infancy, I should say. I was picking it up quickly, but I watched James play uh, Fairy's deck against another Fairy's deck. Oh, yeah. And I remember that they had built up a lot of, uh, of mana and then had fought over one spell. And it was, you know, this is on the stack, and then he put another Fairy on the stack, and then I'm going to use this, and then this is on the... And they had this... And I remember thinking, after watching him, I suck. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just remember thinking, like, I'm so far off of where these guys are at currently. I just, yeah. I don't understand how the stack, you know, I had a long way to go. Yeah. And he was one of the ones that, he didn't know it, but he actually kind of showed that to me because he said, this is how we play, and I, and I, and I just was lost. Right. He definitely uh, is a guy that's around. All, all business. He's business. He, uh, I mean, last, yeah. round, last round he beat John Mellon, Farman, Finkel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ben Stark's Ben Stark, but but James is going to hold his own for sure. Yeah. Be ben, who has farmed to melons in his day, too. <laughs> he sure has. He's up against it now, but... Interestingly, he uh, he sided out a bump in the night and sided in a land. Did he? Yeah. I wonder if he... So, I, I don't know what his removal suite's like. That's going to be a big one. Um, you know, if he can force this game to go long, kind of grind out some damage and then finish off with, with a couple of bump in the nights or whatever, that's also an option for him. I mean, we've talked about it time and time again, but when, when you're the aggressor, especially the black-red, we talked about that, especially just anything with base red, and you get put on your heels, those colors just have very little way to recover, generally speaking. And We saw that here. He just didn't put up enough stuff on the board that really mattered. Basically, a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2 two, two vanilla. Hill Giant and a Grey Ogre don't get it done. When you're facing down flyers that have tap abilities, carrying equipment and that kind of stuff. Now, Ben's going to be on the play, and if he's able to uh, get off to a quick start, I think that James's deck also, you know, Nibbles of the Urn is a good example of a card that you really want to be attacking with, and if you're not, generally very unhappy. See if we're going to get any mulliganing happening here. Mulligans often punish these aggressive decks a little bit more just because they'll have fewer tools to work with. They'll, you know, I, even if you get off to a quick start, uh, you'll, you'll sometimes just run out of gas. I think it's interesting. I, like I said, I like that. I like that Ben was like, you know, I want another land. Yeah. He, he, I've talked to him before, and he, he'll often uh, board in more lands on the play. Which is on the with the Typhoid Rats again. Decent start. Let's see if he's got like a highborn goal here or something. He doesn't. He just passes a turn back and we're going to see walking corpse from James. Ben's going to offer the trade and James is going to decline it. And we're going to see one of your favorites. And he's at one half of the combo. What's the other half? The Cobbled wings. Or executioner's Or hood. the hood now, yeah. So we've got a Pharaoh Ridge Wolf. 
capable of delivering a lot of damage in one hit. And that Landing. is a lingering souls. Here we go. We've seen the power. Yeah, now this is this is a card I told you about Henry Herrera, who is likely in the top eight here. Uh -huh. and he was saying to me, he's like, people just don't understand how good that card is. And he's talking about it in modern. Yeah, people, I, I had that played against me in modern as well. All right, so, so, he just, so he just the wolf was not blocked, and uh, Ben just committed all of his mana for he, the turn. He just wolfs it up for five damage. Yeah. Again, we know that you know Ben's got at least two bumping the knights in his deck, so this is a possibility here. Ben is going to yeah, snap. takes trade. out the walking corpse. Yep, he's going to take two damage. And are we just flashing back here? Yeah, he's just going to flash back his lingering souls and play tragic slip. Yep. Now uh, James didn't hit his his next land drop, so he's falling behind on mana, but. We can see the raw power of Lingering Souls right now. Look at that. One card for it. For One four. card. He's stuck on three mana, and look at his board. Like, and it's not, you know, it's 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 not just four power, not just four toughness, right? It's like modularized. Yes. You're like, I can, I can. Leave one back and attack mm -hmm. with three. I can leave two back and attack with two. I you can... can't chump block that. Yeah. If you've got a, a four four flyer, he can get in for three anytime. I got an anymore. update. Woo! What's the update? Death well, pod update. I do have a death pod huh? update. So um, it's Ian versus Owen. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Ian tried the the mill you kill you plan with Trepanation Blade, but but <laughs> Owen has a lot of really good flashback cards. Yeah, and, I would. Owen's and deck mill you, him. it's like mill you kill me yeah, with and, Owen's deck. And, and, and um, Andrew of the Fight Alabaster. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. And a couple of good spirits. So yeah. Owen got that good. So he's yeah. Two life, but he won the game. <laughs> M Millie life, Owen seems like, like not the he's like yeah. he's like judge. I'd like to stipulate that my opponent can start the game with trepanation blade in <laughs> play. It's, like, it's like the old Microprose game. <laughs> and he's going to set up a potential trade for uh, wow. for one token <clears throat> and a. Uh, you're you're a big a fan of the trepanation blade, blade, right? I hate. Yeah, I know you do. Okay, I was like, really. <laughs> a big part of my constructed deck, my standard deck. <laughs> Craw blade, it's craw worms and trepanation blade. <laughs> Craw blade. Yeah. <laughs> it's very good. Maybe if it gave trample. So Ben says, "Do I want to make the trade? Do I have removal? I think he's got a victim. He does." I have another update. Yeah. They drew. Oh really? Yeah. They just decided everyone else is playing. We can draw or whatever. Uh, well, That's going to put them at 37. They were gone. Okay. And, well, and Owen. A Josh Utterly update. Okay. Owen. Uh, They're both at 36, right? Yeah. Owen had the best tiebreakers of the 36s. Yeah. Ian has the third best tiebreakers. Other people are playing. It's probably pretty reasonable. What's the Josh Utterly update? Oh, he's the one that told me they drew. Oh, okay. So update. Josh Utter Layton knows what happened with Owen Turtonwald and Ian Bartolome. Mm -hmm. So that last turn was kind of interesting. James decided not to use his Blazing Torch on uh, the, the uh, patrol there because if Ben had a second removal spell, then he could remove the other token and it would have just been a completely wasted torch. So he just chumped with his token instead, attacked and hit his land drop, and now it looks like he smote the, uh, the big guy. And He's ben just is, whittling down those lingering souls. Ben it's is like a forced four for to one. death weight, dead weight, a uh, token. That is depressing. Can never be happy about that. Uh, we've got mm. more tokens, so that's a gather the townsfolk. I also noticed that uh, the James has an undying evil in his hand. Not very good in a token with the tokens. Uh, it works. No, it just gets exiled, right? Yeah. And currently he has no actual creatures on the battlefield. Ben falls to eight. And a mausoleum guard hits the table. It's like Ben's uh, flooding. He's got three cards, I think, in hand, though, so one of them's a swamp. He just passes to turn back. And James seems to hit, hit, have hit his stride with the mana here. So it might have been a four. I mean, it was just a, just it was like a three for one at least. That was, he just fugued him. Yeah. And we see an avatar, avatar goal. goal come down, and the undying evil is going to stay back. That looks like a reckless wave. And again, 
we're seeing that, that Ben's back on his heels and, and the kind of aggressive cards that, that he has are uh, yeah, wait, not going to wow, do it. James Wynn, he extends the hand. i got to tell you, that is, that is a, a scary-looking belt of skulls he's going into the top eight with. Beats John Finkel, beats Ben Stark. Yeah. Two pro tour.